right now on VFN TV, Pastor John Kilpatrick is prophesying about how God is going to begin to shake governments and what's that look like. As a matter of fact, legislators are going to begin to preach the gospel right straight from where they're, they're normally complaining about everything else. They're going to begin to talk about God. Also, we're going to talk about Kanye West. What does Pastor Kilpatrick have to say about Kanye West right now on VFN TV? Be sure to subscribe and press alert to get new notifications of new success secrets made available on VFN TV. Pastor John Kilpatrick speaking about prophetically about God's going to begin to shake governments. And what does that look like when God is shaking governments? Also, we're going to hear about Kanye West. What does Pastor Kilpatrick have to say about Kanye West? Take a look. Pastor John Kilpatrick talks now specifically about watch what happens. And he's speaking prophetically now. It was God begins to shake governments. Let's go check it out. Watch what happens when the Lord shakes up governments. I'm prophesying to you. I'm not speaking right now. I'm not preaching. I'm prophesying to you. Watch what happens when the Lord begins to shake governments. Watch what happens whenever he interferes with their agenda. Hear me. Watch what happens when he interferes with their agenda. Watch what happens when leadership is suddenly shifted and changed and nobody knows why. Watch what happens with parliaments, the House of Common, Congress, the House and the Senate, news organizations, in sports, athletes are gonna be saved almost overnight and start preaching almost overnight. Many of them have been paid millions of dollars and they found out it did not satisfy. They lost their families, they lost their peace, they lost all kinds of things. Money doesn't satisfy. They're gonna turn from money to ministry almost overnight. They're gonna turn from alcoholism and drugs and other addictions and beginning have, begin having prayer meetings in the clubhouses because that's the kind of work God is about to do among athletes. Whether you can believe this or not, statesmen are gonna start preaching the gospel from the Senate floor and in congressional hallways. Statesmen and stateswomen will begin preaching to the cameras instead of talking about this, instead of talking about that, they're gonna start talking about the things of God. You may say, Brother Kilpatrick, I just don't believe that. Well, you just wait and see. You'll see it. I said, you'll see it. Number three, this will be the result of a holy awe and pure worship in holy places. Now, somebody says, what about Kanye West? I don't really know. I've been following Kanye for quite a while. It might surprise some of you. But I remember when his mother died and she was having liposuction done years ago. And I remember she died suddenly. And I saw him crying as they interviewed him on television. And I heard the Lord say to me, years ago when I saw it on television, the Lord said, I've got my hand on him. Sometimes people get worse before they get better. But Kanye West has had an experience with the Lord. I saw it coming. I saw that he became bold and didn't care what the publicity said about him. And he didn't care what they said about him in other ways. And I said, boy, if he would just get saved and take that same boldness into Christianity, we might have something. Well, he did. He got saved. Look at that. His new album came out. That's in Baton Rouge. His new album came out. And he sang along with the choir. He took the whole choir with him on the airplane. They went to Baton Rouge. And it was outdoors. And he gave an altar call and over a thousand people accepted Christ as their Savior. Come on, give God praise. You can do better. Get that all for you. Listen. Listen to me. Listen to me. Get that spirit off of you. Come alive, rejoice. God is doing great things. Get that stuff off of you. Woo. 
here's what the Holy Spirit said to me. He said, how some people have been known, they won't be known like that anymore. <laughs> they got publicity and they got hearers and they got fans, but what I'm about to do is turn their life around and they already have a fan base, so when they see what I've done for them, many will come into the kingdom. Come on, give him praise. Recently, God began moving in New Orleans on Bourbon Street. There's a bar there called Saints and Sinners. One evening, this guy went in with a couple of his friends, and he's a worship leader, and he went in, and the bar was not many people there that night. And he went in and he said to the bar owner, he said, hey, would you mind if I play my guitar and sing? He said, oh, go ahead, I don't care. So the guy started singing worship music at the Saints and Center Bar on Bourbon Street. When he started singing about the glory of the Lord, people began to fall off the bar stools and fall in the floor. Come on! Come on! <laughs> Come on, church! something. I tell you, he's up to something. God's up to something. And they began to fall off their seats, their bar stools in the floor, spilling their drinks and crying in the floor. And the bar owner said, what did you do? He said, I'm just singing about Jesus Christ. You know, sometimes we get so inoculated to that kind of thing in church where we hear worship music and we hear preaching, but you got to remember there's people out there that never hears preaching, they never hear worship, and whenever God invades their space, they just fall right in the floor, start crying. That's what's about to happen in the streets of America. I said that's about to happen in the streets of America. Oh my God. That's about to happen in the streets of America. Is that not awesome? We're seeing, I remember watching, you know, Kanye West. You can probably see an image of him right here. Kanye West, you know, I didn't, I didn't listen to his stuff prior to this particular encounter because it was just not good. But when I, when uh, God just, the Holy Spirit just led me to just watch what was taking place at these, these uh, gatherings that was taking place, they call them Sunday services or whatever. And I'm watching people just, the music is so anointed and God's Holy Spirit's moving. And I'm familiar with the glory of God. I'm familiar with, you know, what took place at Brownsville and how God taught us about his glory. And I've been longing for this sound, by the way. I just can't go into details, but I've been just longing for what sounds being loosed here. And I'm sitting here watching, for example, they went to Jamaica. They're literally going to different cities, but this particular encounter, they were in Jamaica. They're just worshiping God. You know, and literally, I'm just the whole time. I think of my grandson David. I'm just looking and going, "What? I mean, it's just what? I mean, you know, you have to be careful because, you know, when God moves, it's it's going to be so different than you're used to seeing. But that's what we need. We need to break out of the things, the traditions of man, which makes God's word and power of non-effect in our lives. God is God. God has never left. As a matter of fact, I think about 1966, Time Magazine, when they actually put up Time Magazine, put up on the front page. In 1966, it said, God is dead. As a matter of fact, you're probably seeing it now. God is dead. That's right. They put it on Time magazine. We had the assassination of uh, President John F. Kennedy. Uh, the soon to come was the assassination of, uh, you can pull that image down, the assassination of uh, soon to be R Senator Robert Kennedy, uh, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. I mean, it was just a tragic rebellion, the Vietnam War. Uh, the family was being broken up. They're in the, the, the rudiments of, Abortion would begin to be legalized. Divorce was uh, basically legalized. Just, just the, everything was turning upside down. And so in 1966, they put on the cover, God is dead. Five years later, the same magazine in 1971 says, God is alive. He has a son. His son is Jesus. And this is what's taken. He starts, they start writing in the article how strip clubs have been turned over to coffee shops, Christian coffee shops in, in Washington and different states all around the world. God's just moving all around. And they're going like, this is when they had the, you know, they call it the, the hippie movement, you know, the, the free love, uh, 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 the Woodstock that took place, all that generation, you know, that they're just rebelling against anything that was established. But guess what? In the middle of all that, God went down and just loved on every one of them, and many of them came in to know the Lord. As a matter of fact, some of these business people you see today, they're in their suits and they own their companies and stuff, they were one of those people in that generation 
which means no matter what it looks like, God can totally take it over. And right now we're seeing what took place with, uh, with Kanye West. It's just an amazing thing. I mean, he, he's kind of stumbled. Understand as a new believer, when people are brand new believers, first of all, that means they're a believer. New means I got to figure this out. It means that I got to learn, you know, be disciple to somebody to teach me about the things of God. And I've never seen a more openness about, you know, what he says, some of his lyrics. So he actually had the album that he'd released out of this whole process. And it, the title of it, he wanted to be just direct and unapologetic to make sure nobody confuses anything. He says, we're going to title this album, Jesus is King. I don't know if you can see it right now, but Jesus is King. Think about that. Jesus is King. Is this, think about this. There's so many different things. There's so many different things that, you know, and sometimes we're being so sensitive that we're not even bringing Jesus up. He wanted to make sure that everybody knew he is declaring the lordship and sonship of Jesus Christ. But then he started having those Sunday gatherings. Then he would bring a pastor in to come and preach the gospel, just like Billy Graham would preach the gospel. And so thousands of people come to be able to hear what God is doing with his gift in regards to music. And all of a sudden, when they preach the gospel, thousands are getting saved. Thousands. People that followed Kanye in his historical career now are coming by the thousands, tens of thousands, to hear what he has to say. And they are accepting making Jesus Christ the Lord of their life. And think about the, 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 the 60s and the hippie movement and the 70s and what was going on. Yeah, I think about you know, Lonnie Frisbee and other ones that he was out there just like everybody else, but God touched him and brought him in, and all of a sudden people started coming to the Lord because of his ministry and ministries just like him. I believe Calvary Chapel was birthed or literally was definitely filled in that particular time what was going on. That's when Liberty Church was uh, around and began to embrace what God was doing with a, um, a spiritual father to be in the Lord who's now with the Lord, Ken Summerall, Brother Ken Summerall, where he was on a ride one day with a, um, in a bus, and he was coming back from ministering somewhere. It's a long story how he had to be on the bus because the people didn't do something they should have done. And he was on the bus with a particular man that people would identify that time as a hippie. In other words, probably shirtless, you know, no shoes, just kind of floating around or whatever. Uh, probably didn't use a lot of, you know, things like deodorant and things like that. And so his mindset was against... He just thought, you know, how can God, his generation thought, how can God touch this generation? But then this particular man that he was sitting beside started smoking and, and, and Ken Summerall, brother Ken said, do you mind putting that out? The guy says, no problem at all. And he goes, well, nice hippie, right? That's what he said. And then also they begin to talk and he's like, my goodness, you know, my perceptions were totally wrong about this. So he goes back to his church. And he said, listen, you know, he talked to everybody. He says, listen, we're going to uh, start allowing and reaching out to this hippie generation and get the church to invite them in. He said it wasn't difficult because he said he was the only one that wouldn't let them in. <laughs> and so once he opened the doors up, their, their, literally their church just started growing and it's when Liberty Bible College was birthed and it just all these things happened. They would show up on the front row with a big fat family Bible, barefoot, sitting there with a big Bible just to hear everything that God had to say. It's just like a Kanye West moment. So you have to be prepared for what's going on. Even though Time Magazine thought it was totally over, it wasn't over. Five years later, because of all that pain, all the tragedy, what was still to come? Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was going to be horrifically assassinated in 1968. Months later, Senator Robert Kennedy, running for president, would be assassinated. You know, just marriage falling apart, families falling apart. Guess what? God was about to move. Evil was happening, but goodness was about to break forth. Wait, wait, wait. Don't go anywhere. Subscribe. Listen, together we can touch the world. That's right. Subscribe below. Right. Wait, 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 wait. Don't go away. Subscribe. We're going to touch the world. You know, a lot of people want to abide with the Lord, but they just don't have a plan to do it. You can request that plan today at iabide.org. Hey, be sure to check us out at vfnkb.com and also join the VFNKB community at vfnkbcommunity.com. Listen, your success is our success. Our success is your success. And our success together is kingdom success.